Hello YouTube. We want to make a small homemade hammer. That's what this is. This was not done on a lathe. It was a piece of chrome plated really hard stuff. I used, and that was done with a Dremel years ago and a grinder. And I always thought it was a little too long. And that just pressed in there drilled. But we like this handle so much. All it says is made in USA. There's no name on it. And this is 5 16 rod if I'm correct. Which I'm sure I am. Okay, this is a 3 8 coupler knot. I cannot tell you how long it is right off, but I forgot I'd cut some off. When I was working on that farm deck, I had to make a little tool to press these pins out. So that's how long it is normally. So we could give you an approximate on that. I should have done this before I started filming, but. It's over an inch and three quarters. Uh, now it's about. Hold on. Okay, I think inch and a quarter or something like that. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. These are inch and a quarter. This is an elevator bolt. Green elevators and stuff. If you just type in YouTube elevator bolts, they're used on all kinds of different things uh, for a fastener. Uh, this is my idea. If these don't go on all the way, we'll just take our Dremel disc and cut, take up a few threads right close to that square so it will seat all the way. So there's one end. These are, I should have wrote this down. I think something like 13 sixteenths. They're under three quarters, okay? like this look how small this is this is a quarter inch bolt this would look better I'm almost tempted to yank that out and redo it uh, package of 10 is probably like four four to five dollars don't buy the galvanized they're always nasty uh, you're not gonna probably have as good a metal either that's just my preference get get the zinc plated uh, when you grind it off, you're going to grind some. You're going to polish the metal with whatever you do. Polished head. But that's my idea. Uh, this is almost like 5 sixteenths across the flat. We're going to drill the hole this way. Okay. The rod has to go all the way through or almost all the way through. You know, we can adjust our depth stop and watch with our drill. If it does, it doesn't matter. I mean, you just smooth it off, polish it. That'll be JB welded. Well, you can always cut grooves and stuff when you put JB welding somewhere. So it has something to bond to. So this isn't completely round. So it tries to pull out. And these will be cut off accordingly. So they just screw in the end. That way you can change the ends. See? That's the whole idea. You can put whatever end you want. You don't need no lathe. You don't really. All you need is a drill. You could probably use a hand drill and drill through if you're. But I'm going to do it to get the hole as straight as I can. You cannot weld these. I already practiced. These couplers are made out of something weird, zinc, whatever metal. Uh, Non-weldable. When I tried welding, it just welded right on top of it, even with the plating ground off. So, I do not know why they wouldn't take the MIG welder. So, said we'll have this down in our drill press vise. Drill the hole exactly centered, centered. And then we'll go from there. So that's the only really work we got to do is drill this hole, cut this off, and we'll show you some hacksaw blades we got. So we'll be back after we drill this hole and get that cut off. That's the only work you're going to do besides cutting these bolts to length. But like I said you can change in whatever you want. You can unscrew them, add whatever tip you want on this thing. I'd recommend don't do what I did. You know, use a whole one. They'd be a lot bigger, but we're going to use what we have. You know, we can always remake it. If you don't like it, just heat it up. That GB welding got to hold forever. Uh, if I would have thought the store, I would have bought another one. No use even showing you whatever. Coupling nut, 3816 threads per inch, the elevator bolt. And then, of course, this, I wait on taking no pictures. 
All found at a Menards, home supply stores, you'll find it. Just ask him, go look through all the, the, the place where it's got all these assorted bolts and stuff. I mean, you can find all kinds of neat stuff rooting through there if you have the time. So, enough talk. We discussed this too much. Okay, here's our progress so far. We've got that lined up. Uh, we're in there about a half inch. What we did was we drilled this hole in here one size less than 5 16. So I can't tell you what it is. It's a 64 less. Then we ground it kind of at a taper on the grinder. So we had to actually tap it on with a wooden mallet. Now it's still a little loose. Okay. But it won't go this way much. So when we put the bolt in here on this side, it should tighten it. The whole idea I'm trying to get to is use these ends to tighten it on there. And, and if you're come a little short on the bolt, because it's kind of hard to grind a bolt off. You put a nut on it before you hacksaw it off. Uh, drop something down in the hole. You can take even like a little piece of lead. You can, you can take almost anything that's going to squish. And it's going to tighten it up. Because this hammer is not meant for pounding really hard. If the head did start coming loose, we'll go ahead and epoxy it all together. But I want the heads interchangeable. So, it's going to be kind of like a flat, you know, like a bodywork hammer. But this is going to be kind of like a ball peen head when I'm done. So, be careful. Don't break your bolt off. I got that pretty tight to get up there. If your last threads don't go, take a Dremel cutter bit or something. My hands are grungy. I haven't got no gloves. I run out. I got to go in the house and get some of them nasty plain ones. Yeah. Grind some of the threads off up towards the square part. Because that's where they kind of catch at. So there you go. And this is not an actual screwdriver shank. I put this in here years ago. It's kind of nasty. See, I hate to show that. But it's a working tool. This is pretty flat. I checked it. I had a straight edge on it. If anything, it dips down the middle set circle. Because you don't want it domed. If you're hitting something flat, you're going to want it flat. Okay, let's finish with the other bolt. We'll get it together and then we'll be done. Like I said, if you have any problems with it coming loose, you could JB weld it all together. Uh, my idea is to make sure the bolts hold it. So you have to drop something down in there, real small, just to press against there to tighten that so it can't pull out. Okay, back to work. Okay, we are done. I suppose you can make a wrench to fit in there because I barely fit a wrench in on the the one at the top. The bottom I had to use needle nose vice grips, but I did tighten it. It did seem to lock it on there pretty good. And like I said, it's not made to be a pound on bank stuff, but I said if you come up a little short on the bolt, you could drop something down in there. But we're gonna like small lightweight tin copper. I can still use that my drill press to knock something around. That's what I use this for with that other head on it. But knock something around a device or to move something around adjust it there you go common hardware stuff i said if you get the one you've seen it i don't know where the piece is uh there's probably more than that it's gonna be a lot longer there which which is better i would say it gives you more reach but i just use what i had i you could just take this back apart and build another hole, but I'm not going to. That's enough reach. We took off, what, a half inch? Would have been a quarter inch each side. Common stuff. No welding. Uh, drill press is preferred, but you might be able to drill that good enough. Like I said, I went one size under 5 16 or whatever the shaft was, 6 4 and then ground it on the bench grinder to a taper. So We're done with this little project. Uh, the handle we might clean it up someday but said it's a tool that's going to get used so thanks for watching and after the pictures i will have a little short video clip showing you this hacksaw blade i found that i like better than a different brand i don't get paid to show any of that stuff so i always put it in the description but it's a lot less wavier you'll you'll see if you want to see that so thanks again for watching
Okay, if you're still here, we'll show you this. These are both like two dollars or something a piece in the store. 24 T, 12 inch long. That's what my hacksaw frame is. Okay, I don't know if it's gonna show up very good, but the lineage blade's really wavy. See that? They stag and bind on small, thin stuff. They are aggressive. I understand that. I mean, they do cut okay, but they're very aggressive. They get caught and snagged and stuff. So I could barely see it in the store. So I got this brand. Now, they'll say made in USA with global components. This just says made in USA. Somewhere. I can put description out and get paid. Anyway, see that? That's less wavy. Let's see if we can get them both up here. Here's the Morris blade. Here's the Lennox blade. Can you see the obvious difference? These went through them soft bolts a lot easier. Someday I'll show my technique for hacksawing how I was taught. When I when I hacksaw, a lot of times I'll go uphill if I'm sitting here in the chair with a little vice thing. I'm kicking the chips out instead of dragging them back in the hole. And I was taught that. I was taught by an old guy to kind of come in this way and kind of kick it up at the end. You're going to wear the center blade, but who cares? The boss is paying for them. Come down and kind of kick it up. You kick the chips out so you don't drag them back in. I think you know what I mean. You know you can saw backwards with a hacksaw if you're good at it. You might be stuck in a corner put the blade in backwards like something in a wall of plumbing. And you, that's all the reach you got. So you put the blade in backwards and saw backwards. Just some little tips. That is a lot less wavy. And I hate to say it. When you put your fingers on it, they're a lot sharper feeling. They really are to me. These feel big and aggressive, okay? They're both 24 teeth per inch. These feel finer and a lot sharper and grabbier. I could cut your finger, you cut your finger faster on this one. There you go. Thanks for watching if you watched this far.